What's going on, everybody? This is James Grandmaster Facts Voice, and here for another episode of the Facts Project. Today, special guest, Chris Moses. We get to talk about Control Z. I got the book right here. Let me slide that shit to the side. <laughs> but yes, Control Z issue three. Issue th- look, I got issue two. I got issue two right there. Look, look, look. We ain't playing. Uh, there we go. Control Z issue one, two, but we, as of right now on Kickstarter, Control Z issue three is now live on Kickstarter. And this was probably one of my favorite projects of last year because, like, it was just a whole new thing as far as augmented realities and how it's controlled through avatars, through through the parallels of a portion of the metaverse called cyberspace. And... Bro, you, you made this such an interesting story, so thank you for being here, for one. Yeah, thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Word. So when we're looking at it, and, and we can start from the beginning, um, because there's a lot of people that haven't had a chance to, um, uh, who hasn't have had a chance to look at the comic. Um, it's it's a it's a feat in a in in the versions of yourselves that you don't necessarily see. Of, of course, a lot of people uh, have left Earth regardless of their um, their classes situation and have arrived in a place where they felt like they could uh, conquer a little bit of freedom. But something happened. Capitalism started to take over there as well. <laughs> yeah. So classism started to form as well. There's the, the higher, the higher ups, the, the mids and the lowers. Right. And it, in, in a sense, how did this happen? So everybody left here for a kind of a utopia, but then in a sense, you know, it just all went to shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do, how does it happen? I mean, we, we get to see some pieces of it. Um, and, you know, it's important to, to know that Control Z takes place 150 years after the, this un- initial migration to um, into Cyberscape. So uh it's it's a it's it's super important to to keep in mind that there's a lot of stuff that brings them to this point and control z is like this this snippet that we're seeing that like drops you in and like has you has you rolling and tumbling and like i mean honestly falling through cyberscape just like idolan does in the beginning of issue issue three it's true i mean it's as far as it's um as how it's created You've you've created you made like almost like a world building issue, Le- like you did with the Saturn effect. Uh, you created this this space where there's a hierarchy, and even and even in a sense where you find out where that hierarchy is, there's always somebody a little bit bigger. Right. You know? And even so, outside of that, you know, there's the radicals. I I would call them basically like in a sense. If you read issue one and issue two, it's uh Puma. Mallard, I mean Badger, if you want to call him at that time, but Badger's like almost at the point where he's like, "Man, fuck this, I don't want to do shit no more." Because at the end of issue two, and we're getting into issue three, Puma's betrayed by by Badger, right? So it's like, what's in it for Badger? Like, like of course, capitalism is run amok, and this is somebody who is probably getting tired of his situation, and the only way for him to feel like he's on the come up is to betray one of his good friends. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he has a lot of different motivations, and there's a a lot of uh, big reveals with Badger in in three and in four, mm-hmm. um, and and yeah, it's it's he's he's got a lot of motivations and a lot of things like pushing him in different directions, and when he does end up uh, portraying Puma, it's a it's a it's a really big, I mean, it's a very big shocking moment at a, uh at the very end of uh, a literal cliffhanger of issue two, and yeah, I mean. I don't want to say too much because I feel like it's uh there's a there's mm-hmm. a lot for people to get into in in into issue three, um that will you know let them really figure out what's going on and like maybe ho- hopefully you know put put the pieces together and um right. pin you know pin down exactly like you know what's what's good with Badger, but yeah he's got uh he he didn't want to do a lot of these things that uh that uh, Puma Puma was doing and we know that he has some sort of history um with the timeout from issue one so he, there's there's something there's obviously something going on in the background that that uh you know it, it, you just it's just a little there's a little breadcrumbs a little breadcrumbs leading you to to you know the big reveal in three and then in further in, in in the next issue when we when we get there later this year 
Right. Now, as far as the uh, the admin is concerned, when we first see her in issues one and two, she's locked up. But it's mm. almost like, in a sense, she still has an opportunity to control things on the outside, mm. whether it's through um, a lot of, con like, I guess, conspiracy theories amongst uh, a lot of the centuries, because they think that they thought in the beginning of issue one that basically like Puma and his crew were being run by the admin. Right. But then you came into like issue two and it's like, OK, well, Badger kind of is, you know. It's, yeah, kind of is, but but also you look at it in a sense. You're like the admin wants to take over the source, correct? And in the means of doing so, what does she hope to achieve? Like, what? It's not necessarily like what's her end goal. What does she hope to control? Yeah, so I mean, that's that's a big uh, a big sort of um, you know point of contention. We don't really know uh, just what. Uh, uh, the admin's um, motivations are past what Xavier wants. Mm -hmm. um, and as we start to learn that, uh, you know, not to get too much into it, that, you know, everybody has their own motivations uh, and everyone, you know, ha is, has their own individuality uh, and their own choices to make in, in the story. So, um, and we get to see that at the very end of uh, issue three, that, you know, everybody does have their own motivations and, you know, who, the teams and the lines that have been drawn may yeah. be a little bit more blurred um, than, you know, or maybe drawn in different directions than you may have thought uh, previously. You know what, uh, as far as from a character perspective is concerned, and I'll, I'll just be totally honest with you, like one of Go my ahead. favorite characters in this whole series is Grim. Grim? Yeah. Because he's more than a prison guard. He's like a, it's like a just a, a merciless weapon. Yeah, Grim goes kind of crazy. I think issue three has a lot of crazy stuff in it. And yeah, yeah he lived Grimm, up to his name in issue three, by the way. He did. Because he the did. sickle you, came out. <laughs> yeah, the sickle did come out. You could actually see, um, you know, so it in the preview pages that uh, uh that's on the Kickstarter that Grim gets to cut loose a little bit. Everybody, this issue, a lot of characters get to kick, kick, uh, cut loose. Oh. You know, Nereus. Uh, Hamera, the admin herself, um, gets to really uh, show off her stuff, and it's an action-packed issue. And um, I mean, from cover to cover, you're you're holding on for dear life. I think that's Control Z in a nutshell. You're you're mm -hmm. dropped in, and it's it's like a sudden drop in a roller coaster, and now it's just hold on as you go on for the tw uh, twists and turns, and um, you know, try and hopefully enjoy it. And then you know, I think this is going to be one of the series. It's only gonna, it's only four issues, right? So right. I think. Hopefully it's going to be a series that a lot of people can uh, come back to, uh, and, you know, give it another read and, you know, see see what they what they miss on the first one, because it's it's definitely a, a cohesive, cohesive piece that has a lot of different like little bits to it. And if you just want to action packed, like you rip your face off, breakneck pace, uh, sci fi action. It is fast. Um, when you get this, that, it, it's fast. It's fast. If you want that with a beautiful art by Ricardo Secchi and Marcos Martins uh, on colors, like you, you're going to get that. But if you also want to, you know, get really dive in and see all the different threads, uh, you know, that's that are going on in the background, all the different little world building that's going on, um, mm -hmm. you can do that. And then if you want to go even deeper and like maybe sort of break down some of the themes and uh, and the questions that uh, are being played with like identity and like what it means to be you and what it means to you know your digital immortality which are things that are coming in the future you know like um it, we're not too far away from what uh that black mirror episode where you could like scan your brain and upload it to this upload it to uh i mean you could already right now like basically train a chat gpt model to like kind of talk like i mean uh a famous person or maybe even a loved one right like those kind of things are that's like not even sci-fi that's like you know in the next few months to next to a year you're gonna have pr like people offering like oh you want to talk to a deceased person yeah like just upload yeah just upload like type in all of their their social media handles and we'll uh, we'll put like something together like stuff like that is 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 super soon and that's in the next year what's in what's in in 10 years what's it in in 20 years i mean the world that we're growing and living in is is getting really crazy so there's a lot of ideas that we're playing with that like 
like the, what it means to be you and what it means to be an amalgamation of things that people think are you or what it means to be the code like control the code through like it is somewhere else even if it is it you in in any sense it's a copy of yourself but is that the same person as as the original right um yeah. it's it's kind of like in um invincible right you have the 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 blue doctor dude that is a clone and he makes clones of himself and like you, they can't they don't know who the clone is right like right. who's the real one but are any of them the original like are any of them the real the first one like it's it's impossible to know yeah it's almost in a sense of like even though well shit i'm, I'm about to call her rava but even though you know like she was brought to this world it's almost like how good how good do we actually have it like was it actually that bad on the other side that we have to we have to be in cyberspace yeah definitely that's a, that's also a big question is like what why like how we address problems you know mm -hmm. um you know people humans are really good at procrastinating right we're really good at getting something done at the very last second Right. Um, a, a lot of like individually, but as as a whole, I think like when when push comes to shove, everyone feels like, yeah, humanity is going to figure it out. Um, and, you know, there's some things that you can't really you can't really wait on. Right. Um, or we've been you've been waiting too long. And by the time it's it's time to address it, it's a little it's a little too far gone. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you what's the next thing you can do? Well, you know, you throw a Band-Aid on it, you know, you you try and. You try and gerrymander something that like lets you go on a little bit longer and not really think about it too much, right? That's and, true. And that's and you know, not to get too much into it, but a lot of those things like you know are you can sort of gleam and get from Control Z and like what what the situation like why why are we in Cyberscape? What exactly has brought mm -hmm. us here? And that's something that they're gonna that that is in answered in issue three. Like when you'll yeah. that answer will be given to you and you'll get the context of okay why like who like why are they here and what's what the stakes are exactly for this book and the series now as far as like how the characters see themselves you're mm. looking in in issue three and you're looking at the source and they're two guardians or better yet even even gods if you want to call them Neris, Neris and Hermera. they are of a different type of being to, than most people they don't seem like Two that would have avatars but do they or are they so everybody in cyberscape uh not i mean for the most part has a real a real body attached to them mm -hmm. um and you know like i said there's a lot of context behind um control z there's like 150 years and we know from issue one that you know like there were other centuries before this this these are these are just right. the last centuries that are left yeah, they and, said there was like only five left after the disappearance of Argo. Correct, correct. Yeah, there was only, uh, but there was more before, and you know that that's an, a good transition because in uh, issue three, there's two backup stories, and mm -hmm. one of them takes place before Control Z. It's called Syntax, and it takes place uh, right at the beginning of them migrating to the simulation. So you get to meet a young Idolin, and uh, in Control Z, her partner is argus right who mm -hmm. she like and who she works with but in syntax it's a new character uh named um uh, z that mm -hmm. you can see on one of our covers for uh, on the campaign um that's that's uh you know she she's cool she's cool there's a bunch of and she's not the only one there's a bunch of other uh, right. centuries that will get to get to meet uh and so you know circling back to nears and hamera um you know we'll, we'll see it will, there'll be more shorts and we'll see um exactly what brings them to you know be the guardians of the source and you know maybe maybe at some point they weren't the first guardians of the source you know yeah um it's very 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 possible so it's like i said there's a lot of context to it but yeah once we get to them we see that they're very detached from uh what's going on in cyberscape they're very like they take their job very very seriously and they've lost the, it seems to have, they've lost a little bit of humanity in in the process so um and i don't sort of comments on this in issue too um that you know that they didn't want to lose any more people but in the in the it, like trying to do that they've sort of lost themselves so but we get and uh, you know that aside we do get to see them cut loose and we get to finally see what they do it's and true. the beauty yeah yeah go ahead 
No, no, it was like it's true because like when you're looking at the shorts that you made, fragmented realities being one where basically Argo is basically just already been control Z'd and and he comes to face to face with his with it basically with his his he's the avatar with his real self. And then you're looking at it, and I remember something that Puma said in issue one where he was discussing, you know, like, why don't you get your ass back to the lowers? And he was like, you really think this place is that big? It was like, you're like, you're closed minded. If you think this place is, I could just go back to the lowers and that's it. Yeah. Like, he, it's almost like Puma knows a lot more than a lot of people think. Puma does know a lot. Um, and, you know, it's it's hard. Like, I don't, it, for what reason? I think um, just in general, though, he, he knows a lot just from his experiences. Right. Like he's gone through a lot. He's someone um, that's in. Uh, uh, in a predicament, right? We see an issue too that you know his brother got control Z, right? And so, right. And I was so, going to ask you about that. I was yeah. like, what? Now, now, if you could bring up the deal that they made, mm. you know, the basically uh, where Puma is talking to his older brother and almost in a sense lets him know, but like, um, however we figure this out, we got to find our way back to each other. Yeah. But like, the, is that? intently the deal like that they were going to reunite at some point in time and it was like a meaning of how yeah i mean so when they're talking in in that scene um you know they they didn't want anybody to else they they'd seen a lot of people get control z already oh yeah um so they don't want they didn't want the other person to uh be con control z in a cell so it we see their contingency plan for you know all the their their ability to hack the, uh, into the simulation and use the sentry's ability to code essentially against them to allow them to code themselves um you know a crucial part of uh cyberscape is that only certain people have the permissions to do whatever you want like a sentry can code whatever you want whatever they mm -hmm. want but somebody in the lower is doesn't have that access right so um uh, so when his brother finds out this hack to allow other people to code that shouldn't be able to code. Right. Um, it, it's a really big deal. Uh, we also see that, you know, and then, the, you know, there's, there's some stuff going on in the background that sort of will link it to the short syntax where we actually meet um, the, the first, the first script kitties, you know, the, the group that Puma is in, you know, mm -hmm. is an inherited group. That's not a group that he started. That's right. a group that that sort of has been going on for our, uh, for a while. So it's, you know, like I said, there's a lot of context that that at the end of the day is just in the background that you could just tr go in and like re if you want a super rich experience, you can go get it. But um, right. if you just want, you know, breakneck sci fi action, you know, that's that's what you're going to get. And that's what you're going to get in issue three, circling back to Nearest and Hamera. You know, they really let loose and they get to show themselves as I mean, the godly figures that they are in cyberscape. Yeah. In the storyline, as far as like how uh, Adelon, of course, has been in cyberspace, uh, cyberspace for God knows how long. In your mind, because you wrote this story, it's like, do people have the ability to grow or do they automatically just become their avatars once they hit cyberspace? Uh, you know, it's a it's an interesting question. And I think um, people. It, like it's it's it's, you know, like I said, I don't want to give too much away, but okay. when. When you have, the, there's definitely something, uh, there's a, a difference between, you know, your avatar and your real person, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and that's something that we'll explore more in issue three uh, and then issue four. Um, I don't want to get too much into it, though, because there's some good stuff get, coming ah, in issue four that I think sure. will a answer every everything that anybody could uh want to ask and hopefully leave people wanting more um for you know the future but until then if you like i said we have a big gigantic fight scene um i mean the the issue is just is non-stop oh, it's just it, going issue so. three is like non-stop non-stop it just goes crazy it I goes mean, crazy because uh, we, we i think i remember us talking about issue one and i was like man he really has a character with no arms that's literally like playing chess with her feet you know, so <laughs> yeah, and and then come to find out, you know, the source, of course, probably erased her arms just for a sense of bondage for her being in prison. And when she got out, had the ability to use her arms, man, she started wreaking havoc immediately. Yeah. Like, 
there's just so many, so many scenes between her, uh, Neris and Hermera, uh, Grim yeah. in a lot of those scenes. Um, I mean, I Dolan, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I Dolan in her own scenes. Good guy. Yeah, she got cooked. She, Yo, the, she the, got cooked. The, the the interrogation scene between I Dolan and Admin, where she's basically, I think she bucked her in her chest at least twice. Yeah. You know, so, like, like, yo, you're going to talk to me. I like, you, you got to give me the right answers. Or yeah. I'll shoot you again. And she's like, literally plugs a hole in her chest. Yeah. And it doesn't really do anything to have me. And he was like, all right, look, can you clean this shit up? Cause I can't really concentrate on talking to you with this hole in my chest. Right. Yeah. You know, like, like, like funny quips like that. Like, I like the way you wrote that. She's one of my favorite characters. I mean, I don't want one of my favorite characters, but the admin, I feel like I had a lot yeah. of fun um, creating. And I mean, the whole world. Uh, it was a really enjoyable thing to create. I mean, I found um, I had a friend introduce me to Ricardo Secchi and I saw his work and I was like, we have to make something dope. So I made Control Z and it's been something that we've been working on a, for a long time. Um, and we're at, I mean, issue three is already done. Obviously, you, you've gotten a yeah. chance to take a look at it. Um, yeah, and you. No, of, of course, man. And it'll be printed very, you know, soon and sh shipped off to everybody. Uh, and we've already started issue four. So um like that uh, tentatively you know everything can change but as of now we should be uh tracking to somewhere around the summer maybe a little bit later to get issue issue four out so this year we're going to be you know hitting the 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 conclusion and really wrapping wrapping this story up and you'll be able to see how all these characters you know and they all have they all have their moments and um issue issue three is is gonna leave you uh leaving you feeling kind of crazy and maybe four will do the same thing trust them but it's, it just did trust. That to me but trust you know just yes. just hold on tight and just let it just 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 just, just let yourself be the experience be the experience you know and yeah. I and I promise it'll be worth it hey well hey look even outside of that sense you're a creator that doesn't sit on their hands or anything like that. So I expect, of course, multiple projects from you. And I know you have multiple projects that are basically coming out this year. Uh, one happened to be the sense that American Yakuza is going to be coming out with the collaboration between uh, yeah. McKelvey and Anthony Stokes. We talked to him last week about, about that coming up. But what else is pretty much on your plate? Now, now I look, I'm biased because I know how good you are with sci-fi. You know, so, more sci-fi? Yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to say not to. You know what I'm saying? But I mm. definitely would like to see more from you because I know the way y'all talking about American Yakuza, that seems to be like the next big project from both of you. But the thing is, what else do you have on your plate? There, You know what? We have a full year's lineup of stuff coming out. I, That's what I heard. Yeah, it's it's a lot. We got a lot of projects, uh, you know, in production are already finishing up. Um the goal is for everything that we hit to Kickstarter, uh, except for I summoned a demon should be, should be ready to go when we, when we launch and it should be, have really quick turnarounds. Um, so yeah, I mean, next after control Z, I have a book, uh, a another new series, another one shot. And this one's called uh blood type V. Uh, mm -hmm. and we follow, you know, a, a monster hunter, uh, and that should be, that should be a fun one, a monster hunter. And it's got some vampire vibes some werewolves some monsters. So I think people will really enjoy that one. Um, and then, you know, Soma city's coming back. So Soma uh, city, Soma city two, so, Soma talk, city two. Then, look, ready? Talk about a, uh, uh, talk about the fact that you made a you made a comic that was mm. more so at that time. I think it was a concept because it happened during COVID. And we yeah. talked about this constantly, you know what I'm saying? It was something that was in your brain that you had to get out. It was you you were literally like looking out your window. You lived in you live in New York. Yeah. So you know what New York looked like. Yeah. At at COVID. It was just nothingness out there. Yeah. You know, it was looking rough. So you, you created this book, Soma City, you know, and it it literally is an al allegory of the pandemic, if you think about it. You know, yeah. And the fact that 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 has an issue too, I'll be looking forward to that too. Exorcist, Exorcist Club. Exorcist Club is issue two is in I got production it here. too. Yeah, I got, got it here. You got it? I got it. You know what okay, I'm saying? So I'm, that, I'm that, that, that was dope as well. And the thing is, like, now, you know what I'm saying? I know Red Sea Comics, you've had your opportunity doing the Saturn Effect. I remember when we first talked of you just telling me, you know, I, I've been going to Comic-Cons with just 
the Saturn effect. And this was this was my ball yeah. through the books of just doing that. Now that you've branched and have shown your showcase of doing a lot of genres at one time, how do you feel now, like, as far as, like, being a, a comic writer at this moment? Because you have the ability to do multiple genres at all times. You have collaborations that you're, that you're doing on a worthwhile basis. From an artistic view, this looks great. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Um, honestly, I'm I'm having I'm having the time of my life right now. It's it's Good. it's honestly, it's honestly it's some it's some beautiful stuff, and it's something that I've been dreaming about. And I mean, at the same time, it's just the beginning. But um, you know, I'm not taking it for granted, right? And that's why you know I'm not only doing a couple series this year. I'm doing as much. I'm filling up as much as I can. You know, like I said, we're gonna uh, after Soma, we're coming back, and then I summon the demon is coming back. Mm -hmm. EC two. EC3, Control Z4, another new title that in production, but we won't, we'll come back to that. Okay. We'll come back to that. But like Alpha 6, Alpha 6 is almost done, about to come back as well. Um, okay. We have a, a lot, a lot on the plate um, for, for this year for people to really get really excited about. And good. Um, and yeah, I'm like I said, I'm not taking it for granted. I want to, I want to put out as much work as possible and, um you know as while kickstarter allows it i mean i'm going to be on kickstarter and i think that's just the that's just how you should do it i mean this is the it's it's a beautiful platform and you know any comic creator back in the day if you told them that yo you can make whatever comic you want and put it online and if people really goddamn like it you'll make a you make some good money and right. you could keep doing that as long as people you're you know you practice good business practices you respect your backers um, mm -hmm. you get them to get them their stuff and you know you try and be as co punctual and communicative as you can you know because sometimes things you know slow like things come up you know like um i have red sea legends right and we, we, you know waiting for waiting for uh cards like having card misprints and stuff like things right, right, things right. like that happen but you just gotta you know be communicative with your backers and and let them know like yeah like um that what, what's going on um, but like, if you told people that they could do that, they'd be like, what? That's really, that's all you got to do. You could just do that and make comics and just, and just go. Right. And like what I'm doing, I feel like, I, I think anybody can do, you know, mm -hmm. like, I think, um, if you look at how I started, like my first campaign did 1800 bucks, second one did 2,400, third one did like 3,400, right. Fourth yeah. one did five racks, right. Like these are like, like they're, 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 they're they're solid, you know, it's nothing, yeah. nothing in insane, but like these, these are good. Like, I mean, if that was your goal, they're, they're manageable, small, like campaigns that anybody can, you know, I feel I can look at and be like, I can, I could recreate that. And hopefully you can look like, Oh, I could do so much better than that. Right. And, and like really, and really rock and go crazy. And I think, you know, and then you could see how like it started to transition. You know, I started doing other things and trying out different things, branching out. And like, obviously um, there's been, there's been some success, um to it but you know at the same time there's also levels to it so that's why i say that's it's what just i was about to say there's yeah. a there's a quality aspect you yeah. find good artists you have good dialogue you write well i appreciate it so it's like you know i love to say that everybody can do this <laughs> but i can't <laughs> right yeah i mean i think uh you know what i, I think everybody like not everyone is going to be I appreciate I appreciate the kind of words first of all, but you know everybody has their skills. But essentially, it means like if you if you have a story, if you have stories, like tell them because there's yeah. the ability for you to for it to do really well. And like like I said, there's there's levels on, on in that sense, right? Like there's levels to how good you are, but um, there's also like levels to you know how well you do on Kickstarter and how much you do on Kickstarter. And yeah, I might it might look like I do a decent amount, but like look at somebody like a Pat Shand that does a lot of books you know I look at somebody like mike tenner from bad bug media you know yeah. looking uh, look at Merck publishing you know look at um all these you know look at armin the sim you know look at i mean even stokes is is really p cranking up his his yeah. production and you know a lot of people are putting out a lot of a lot of books and are really trying to you know get get what get what they should from kickstarter while also building up a building up a fan base like this is the best place to do it if you told anyone this is how I like how i like to think about it right mm -hmm. uh if you told somebody that you could put up you could go uh get essentially paid email subscribers right to your email list mm -hmm. if you told somebody that there was somewhere that you could do that where people would essentially pay to be part of your um you, you know part of your group and part of you like backing you and supporting whatever you're making 
yeah everybody would be on it you know Mm -hmm. Because that's that's what these people that's what people become like that's what backers become especially if you treat them well they'll come back and they'll come back to you they'll want to know more about what you're doing they want to back another project it's commerce it's a owner's mentality yeah it's like if I do if if I do good by my product and you mm. like my product and it's a brand name you know what, what was it Denzel in, in American Gangster he was like mm. Blue Magic it's a brand mm. name I I I. I basically I put my life behind this. Yeah. I put my life behind this brand. I certify it. There's nothing against it. Like yeah. if I put this in your hands, it's just like you having a Coca-Cola. They right. they trust their product. I trust mine. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so that's what it's building. You know, you gotta build that. Um, and you know, it take it takes, you know, putting out a good product, but also treating treating your backers well, you know, like oh, yeah. making sure they get their stuff and and like you know. Coca Cola treat 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 their customers well. And it's true. The product that they wanted. It's true. I don't drink soda no more, but I'm saying yeah, nah, yeah. They, they got a lot of people hooked on Coca Colas. They just yeah. the soda down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I was watching a crazy video on that. Yeah, yeah. We were I drinking mean, too much cola, but right. at the same time, at the same time, it tastes good. It's consistent. Yeah. But it's but basically just like yours. It, like you're not necessarily putting your projects out every single day. But the thing mm. is, people do look forward to your project. Mm. I'm, you know, I'm whether, glad. I'm whether glad. you're doing it, doing it once a month, whether you uh, whether you're doing it three times a year, you know this. It is what it is, and you've gotten to that point now. Yeah, yeah. We've we've been growing. We've been growing, and like I said, this is just the start. Like this year, yeah. we're hopefully going to go um, even for even bigger heights because you know all, all these projects are an acu- uh, the you know they accumulate and like sort of snowball and you know some things like really help you accumulate like i feel like you know last year we started with control z we talked to we you know yeah. we talked last year um i think was that the last time we talked or did we talk was, for, the last time we talked was issue one and two yeah so that that was a whole year ago and i mean since then i've run five other campaigns um and we've really started to take off and like a lot of you know a, a lot of backers started to come when i branched off to something like you know i summoned a demon right like that that was, to, yeah. you know, to this day, my biggest campaign. Um, not sci-fi at all, you know. Not it's sci-fi totally at different. All. Garnered it, five digits. Yeah, I mean, it, it it definitely did its thing, and uh, like that's that's the that's the beauty of it, you know. Yeah, that's the beauty. And and that was like a campy comedy with a little bit yeah. of NSFW. Uh, just a little, just a little bit a of sexy, bit. you know. Just a little no. bit. I was like, all right, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then you get five five digits in the can. Why not? Exactly, exactly. And then you know, I, you know, the we're actually shipping out uh, digitals very soon. Okay. Um, it's it's going to be a uh, a really awesome uh, to see people finally get it because this is that's a project that I so Control Z obviously is uh, only has an uh, one more issue after this, but that's a project that we will be uh, I summoned is going to be something that we've been making for a long time. There's already plenty of chapters oh, yeah. in the can so mm-hmm. so yeah like the brand the red sea brand essentially this is just the beginning if you think we're popping now mm-hmm. see, see me in 2025 okay see All right. 2025. so so what's next up next up is blood type v is a new new title so let's see we'll see how people are are, are messing with it and uh it's actually really interesting because it's going to be my first black white and red book oh Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's definitely visually, it's really it's definitely an experience, and I think people are gonna enjoy it. Um, and if you like control Z, mm-hmm. um, but you know, maybe wanted something, some something a little bit more urban fantasy, like I got you. All right. I got you. Bro, look, it's always good to talk to you, regardless Absolutely. of what we're talking about. Uh so uh definitely. Uh as a matter of fact, if you if, if shout out the creative team for control Z. Uh, so you have Ricardo Secchi on the line art. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Then you have Marcos Martins on colors. Amazing. You have Reed Hinckley Barnes mm-hmm. on on letters, right? Uh, then we have a bunch of variants. So we have an amazing yeah. variant by DC Comics, Chuma Hill. Mm. Chuma Hill. And also has a not safe for work variant. So definitely go run over get that. We have a great cover from uh, Ray Sama. And then we have uh, a cover from Filippo Curzi, who did a cover for yep. I Summoned a Demon. I Summoned uh, Demon. So this is, if you want to you know, get another Curzi cover, you can go grab that. 
And then lastly, we had the artist from uh, EC do a cover from us, Dario Marconi, and uh, he did a great job. And there you go. That's the, that's the whole team. That's that's the the big the big team that we put together. It's actually not that big. It's a pretty close knit, pretty streamlined. And yeah, uh, yeah it's it's a, it's a product that I think is gonna uh, hit a home run. And then we also have uh, two sh- backup shorts. Uh, sorry, I totally uh, like uh, I, I oh, meant yeah. to circle back to them, but we also have. Um, you know, fractured memories by Claudio Bernardini and Mattia Secchi, uh, and then we have Syntax, which is um, Abe Fontina and Nicole Vecchini. Um, oh. and yeah, they both of those teams went really crazy. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of a lot of great people working on this book. I mean, I just supply the words, I find the people, but they do all the crazy arch stuff that yeah. makes it really amazing. Uh, yeah. And then it all gets looked over by our our amazing lead editor Ignacio De Meglio. He's the fu- he's the best. He he is just what really like uh, is one of those driving forces and one of those uh, you know players that helps you know make sure that everything looks uh, as smacky as possible. Because I mean that's what we're trying to we're trying to deliver. We're trying to that's deliver trying that, to... that 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 Coca Cola. Yeah, exactly. It's a brand yeah. name. I stand brand by name. it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Chris, man, I appreciate you doing this with me uh, right now. What is it about like uh, 22 days left in this Kickstarter? Because I know y'all like to do it short now. Yeah, I think there might only be like 18 or 17 Damn, days. Oh. Something like that. It's it's short. There's not much time left uh, already. We're, we're, you know what? We got a lot to fit in the, on the on the slate, you know, and, um, you know, I we got we got more shit to show. We got more stuff coming down the pipeline. So, but yeah, I appreciate you having me on the show as always. Absolutely, man. Yo, look, it's it's always the best. Always good to talk to you, man. I know you don't do a lot of shows either. I was about to say, I haven't done one in a minute. You don't do a lot of shows. So I'm glad I got you. I was like, for facts, absolutely. Anytime. (laughs) All right, my man. So from Chris Moses, uh, Control Z, issue three, live on Kickstarter right now for the next couple of weeks. So go out there and get that. 15 uh, days, 15 days, 18, even less than I thought. 18 days. This is, this will be up by the time this is up tomorrow. You you got two weeks and three days to get that shit done. All right. Exactly. So, so for James Graham, Master Facts Boys, Chris Moses, go out there, get Control Z and all his other product projects that he's going to be putting out the rest of this year. But we are out.